Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this, our first ever webinar. My name is Emma Scott, and I'm the Operations Manager at Disability Equality Scotland. And I'm joined today by my colleague, Alistair Bruce, who will be helping to facilitate today's session. Can everybody hear me okay? If you guys want to just type yes in the comments box. Great. Thanks for joining us today. We at Disability Equality Scotland have a commitment to our members and the disability community that we will engage with them and listen to their views and champion on their behalf. Now, things have changed for all of us in the last few weeks. And while our usual practice would be to bring you all together and share and have a discussion on different topics, that just isn't possible right now. But we wanted to try and continue to engage with our members as best we can. So we're trialing Zoom as a platform. So some of you may well have become familiar with Zoom very quickly over the last few weeks. And for others, it will be still finding your feet. So let me explain how today's session will run and how you can interact with us. So I'll soon hand over to Keith and Rianne from Sestran, and they will give a short presentation sharing slides and a video about today's topic, which is the Thistle Assistance Card and App. At any time during the webinar, you'll have the opportunity to submit your questions to today's presenters. So to do so, just type your question into the Q&A box, which is in the bottom control panel. And as time allows, the presenters will address as many questions as they can during the session, which today will go on till about 11.45. If you would prefer to ask your question directly to um, a panellist, please just say so in the Q&A box and we'll select you to speak. And at which point you should unmute yourself so that the rest of us can hear you. Now, if you have any technical difficulties today with Zoom, then please type your issue into the comments box and my team will do their best to help you. We also have a live captioner with us today. This will take you to a separate website called streamtext.net, where you can adjust the accessibility features such as the size, the font, and the color of text. We're also recording today's webinar, so we'll be able to share the link with you afterwards, which you can um, share with some colleagues. And then finally, we have a short evaluation survey. This will be sent to you after today's webinar in an email. Please take a few minutes to give us your views as this will really help to improve the experience for our future webinars. I hope that's all clear and we'll do our best to help you as we go through today. But I'll just hand over, first of all, to Keith Fiskin, um, who is the Programmes Manager for Sestran, and also to Rianne Forrest, who is responsible for marketing the Thistle Card and app. Over to you guys. Keith might have frozen, so I might take over. Hi, we are from Sestran, as already stated, and we coordinate the Thistle Assistance Card and App Scheme along with the other RTPs. Um, I'm pretty sure we've got a PowerPoint, um, but Keith might have that, so I'll try and pull it up. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. Yep, all right, okay. Um, I'll just pull the PowerPoint up. Okay, excellent. Well, I try and start video again. Can you see me now? Yep. I can. Or Ali, do you have the slides up for everyone? Or ah, Rianne's got it going. Right, okay, excellent. 
So yeah, if we just uh, start the uh, the slideshow, perfect, Ian. Um, I'm sure you are familiar with the Thistle Assistance Program. It's been running for a few years now, but I thought myself and Rianne could take the opportunity to introduce you to some of the work uh, that we have been doing. So um, if we could go to the first slide, please, Rianne. That's going good. Um, well, we always kind of start with this within a transport con context. We know that transport is uh, uh, complicated and in the current uh, situation with the COVID-19 pandemic, it's even more so. Um, so uh, we certainly want to talk about how Thistle Assistance can approach uh, helping uh, you use uh, uh, public transport, but obviously currently and uh, not at the moment because we are, we're not supposed to be using public transport unless we unless we have to. So I just wanted to uh, um, I think we might have lost Keith again, so I'll just continue over. So uh, the Thistle card was actually launched by Enable Scotland um, in 2002 and Sestran took over development in 2011 with the other RTPs. Um, so they really decided they needed, a, they needed a, a card that was able to give people accessible travel, no matter what assistance they might require. Um, I think it's important to note that we've also got key workers and essential workers who are traveling right now who are this disabled who need assistance when getting out and about. So we do have the app as well for that. Um, so this assistance is part of the Scottish Government's accessible travel framework. Um, it creates more awareness and support in communities across Scotland. Um, we work really closely with travel companies so that we can um, assess what needs to be improved upon, what people are saying they need um, from the travel companies. So we work really closely with them. And we always admit that this assistance is ever evolving. Um, it's always changing. We're always learning new things about what people could need for accessibility. We're constantly getting that data and information off of people. Um, so this is what our new rebrand looks like. From the previous slide, you might notice what the older one brand looks like for people who are maybe have used the card for a long time, but this is what the fresh new rebrand looks like. Um, so we are very focused on that um, this whole assistance is about people and it's people focused and it's all about the stories that people use. Um, so we came up with like these nice little graphics that you might have seen on our social medias. If those who have followed, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, and we've got Facebook too. Um, but from these stories, they're real people's stories, even if those are not the real people depicted. Um, and they are what we learn from. So we, they are what people have told us that they like about the card, what they think the card could be improved upon. Um, we've got the app now as well, which I know a lot of people have enjoyed using, um, but we've got both because I know some people enjoy the card, some people prefer to use the app. Um, this is a little video, see if it will play. Sometimes using public transport can seem a bit daunting. That's where this assistance comes in, whenever you'd like some extra help for a more comfortable journey. The free card and app tell transport staff what help you might need. Use it for your daily commute, to pop to the shops, or to explore somewhere far away. This assistance is always here to help, because a little help goes a long way. Find out more at thistleassistance.com. Yep, so as stated in that um, advert, we've got our own website now too. Um, it's a lot easier to use, it's been accessible, approved. Um, so 
All you can do is you can go on the website and you can click order card for those who are wondering how to order a card. Um, there's that facility now too. Um, so, um, so when we got pistol assistance back, we decided it was really out, it was quite outdated for what the time. So we had some ideas, we decided on the new branding, we decided on the new website, which is the hub, and we started a new campaign, um, which some of you may have seen, which is the Little Help Goes A Long Way campaign. Um, that's our hashtag on Twitter, so generally be able to see if you post something on Twitter using that hashtag, we're generally able to see it, or you can at us for any other questions. But um, we think it, it is a better improvement, and the good thing about this logo is that we've got all the stuff on the website. So if you have a company or a business who wants to get this assistance out there, all of the stuff you're seeing, you can download from the website and put up in offices um, in many other places. And the good thing about the new logo is if you make it very small, it's still readable. So you can still see what it is. Um, when you do get your card in the post, um, it comes in like a leaflet for those who don't know with stickers and you put the stickers on the back of the card. We kind of ask to you to keep the front of the card plain just for bus operators and trains because when they see the logo they know what the logo is so it's more just to keep that plain so it's easier for people to decipher what it is. Um, so this is a toolkit um, that's you can see the uh, leaflet I was talking about, our posters, another one of our little caption stories. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, we are on social media. Um, this existence before didn't have a social media. Um, it kind of didn't have its own hub, but now it does. So any questions you have on Thistle, um, you can ask on there. You can ask through our website, um, so it's much more accessible for people to be able to ask questions and get the information they need. Um, and then we thought about our next steps, and that was um, how do we respond to COVID-19? Um, we you may know people who struggle with pa public transport. You yourself may struggle with public transport. Um, do we need a wider spectrum? These are some of the questions we are asking. Um, we want to relieve some of the mobility, communication and anxiety issues and barriers that are still there. Um, we've come a long way, um, but we always accept that more needs to be done. And we're kind of looking into journey finding and uh, journey planning and wayfinding. Um, we want to understand a traveller's experience from door to door um, and help relieve some of those anxieties. So there's many response to what's happened just now with COVID. Um, people right now probably have a lot of travel anxieties and we want to know how to relieve those anxieties for people and how to make travel as accessible as possible to those who need it. Um, and that is presentation. Um, I will stop screen sharing now so that people can ask questions. Not too sure how to stop screen sharing. <laughs> there we go. Great. Thank you, Rianne. That's really helpful. Um, I think we've probably covered uh, quite a lot of information about um, Thistle Card there, but I'm sure people will have questions. So please, if anybody does have questions, fire them into the Q&A box. Um, I think already we're having some questions coming through that I think you will be expecting, Rianne, which is, probably about the kind of um, awareness level of the Thistle card. I know that the transport staff's awareness of the cards can really impact on the experience of the card user. Can you tell us a little bit more about what training is given to um, transport staff so that they can recognise and know what to do when they see a card? Okay, so we're doing a lot of work just now on training. Um, training we see as an R. You give them a lesson and then it's over, it's done. It's a constant thing. It's constantly learning about new things, learning new environments. So we're currently working with transport providers to get maybe what their 
anxieties are themselves and then we're, we're going to create a pack that's given to the transport provider that should be included in um, bus driver training and everything else so that um, when a passenger comes on they are assured that the bus driver knows how to assist them and the bus driver themselves are ensured that they know how to assist as well so training packs and um, videos there's lots going on and in development to help with um, training because we know for a lot of people um, they can, that is still an issue and um, so we want to take on board what people have said and mm -hmm. then um, relate that back to drivers so that um, they have the knowledge because knowledge is power and yeah. if they've got the knowledge to help them they for everyone. Great, thanks Rianne. So just on, um, a bit more about the training side, are, somebody's asking, are disabled people involved in the training, whether designing it or delivering it? Um, disabled people have been involved with BISL from the get-go, um, so we are constantly taking on information from disabled people about the issues they have faced on public transport and how that can assist with training. We are always more than happy to take on board comments from people on how they think training can be improved because again this assistance is about the people and the people who use it so um, we are all for disabled people coming to us and saying this isn't working this is what needs to be changed because it's um, a card for everyone so um, even though it's an accessibility card it is a card for everyone so pregnant mothers can use it um, it's a card where maybe you have a temporary disability where you've maybe like hurt your leg or broken your arm and need assistance. So it covers a broad spectrum. So anyone who has any comments on it or um, has anything that they feel still needs to be raised, we are more than happy to take on board and relate back to travel operators. Okay, great. Thanks, Rianne. Um, one other question is about which modes of transport or transport providers are actually accepting the Thistle card at the moment? It should be all transport providers, planes, buses, ferries, trains. Um, it's a card that's interchangeable between all of them. So um, although a lot of transport providers have their own assistance programme, like I know ScotRail has um, passenger assist, mm -hmm. which I know a lot of people prefer to use, um, but some people might not want to use. So ScotRail acknowledged this assistance as well as a passenger assist, so you can use them in tandem. Um, Edinburgh Airport, we've spoken to them quite a lot. Um, again, airports have their own passenger assist, but... Yeah. Um, I was just going to ask you, because there is a question here specifically about airports. Um, so can you tell us how it works at the airport? Is it just about using the, the bus to get to the airport or does the card work differently there? It works in kind of any way you want assistance. So for okay. example, say you need to get one of the lanyards. I know Glasgow Airport does a lanyard that you get, um, but a lot of people don't like, don't like using lanyards. Some people love them, some people hate them. It's a completely personal choice. So um, say you've got your Thistle card and you need to alert the airport that you need some assistance, then you can show them the card. So it kind of works the same as one of the lanyards in Glasgow mm -hmm. does, if that okay. clears that up any. Okay, so am I right in saying that lots of different operators have their own way of doing things at the moment? Because you mentioned ScotRail have a passenger assistance, but Stagecoach First Bus, they also have something similar. So how yeah. does the Thistle card fit in? Could be confusing um, for people if there's different methods. They should recognise the Thistle card. So what we what we got back from people is that they ended up having about twelve different assistance cards mm -hmm. in their parcel wallet, and it was overwhelming and confusing, and people didn't know like what to hand over when, and it was getting so. The idea of Thistle is that yes, you can use the ones that they have but they are also aware of this and we're working towards um, them recognising Thistle. So you could hop off a train going to Edinburgh and go into Glasgow and still use your Thistle card. Um, so they all recognise it and we've all spoken to them. So it should be a case of 
if you show your thistle card, you should get the same treatment as if you were to use any of their mm -hmm. personal assist cards. Okay. And is there any sort of monitoring done about that kind of level of um, assistance that people get? You, um, I, think, I, currently have a, I currently have a survey up. Okay. Um, because we do want to hear back from people about their experiences with it. Um, because again, we want to make sure that people are having the best possible experience with it. Um, but um, again, it's more hearing back from people. Um, we're constantly in contact with the travel providers as well. I know I speak to Lothian buses um, regularly. Um, spoken to Lothian buses recently for one of um, a passenger who had a bit of an issue. And I spoke to Lothian buses about it because they phoned us and that got resolved quickly. So okay. um, I ha it's just more from feedback from people and um, passengers. Okay, great. Lovely. Um, a couple of other questions, Rianne, if you don't mind. What happens when a disabled people get person gets on the bus and it's busy? Will the driver get out of their seat to help them? What kind of level of assistance can a disabled person expect? Um, the card's customizable, so um, you will get stickers with your card. Um, some will be blank, some won't be blank. So say you want the bus to wait until you're completely seated. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a lot of pregnant women that's been a fear. For a lot of people who are maybe a little unsteady, um, that's been a fear. Um, so you just show the bus driver your card and it says, please wait till I'm completely seated, for example. The bus should not move until you're safe and you feel secure in your seat, and then it'll go. Say you've got someone maybe who has anxiety um, and it's to do with travel, and they're very worried that they're gonna miss their stop, which I know is a big anxiety for people. Um, you can put a sticker on the back of the card that says, please tell me when to get off at Lothian Road, for example. So the bus driver should then say, oh, by the way, you're at Lothian Road, this is your stop, this is where you get off. Um, so the level of assistance is dependent on you and what your needs are, because not everyone's needs are the same. So not everyone wants a bus driver to get up and help them to their seat. Mm -hmm. um, some people don't want that at all. So yeah. it's dependent. But they will do it if that's what you're requesting. Yeah, if you need, if you need the help on and off, then they should to that. Okay, great. Um, Rianne, do you have any information about how many people are currently registered or, or using the card in, in Scotland? Um, we printed about 10,000 okay. when we fought on our rebrand and we are now having to order more. So we have gone through quite a bit. There are some people who are using the older card um, but we're trying to phase that out now with the new card, so. Okay. okay. And is there any difficulty if you still have a, an old card? Can it, is it still just as recognised? It should still be just as recognised. Of course, we, we recommend that it's free, so mm -hmm. don't pay for postage, you don't pay okay. for packaging. Just now, we're not able to send cards out because of the current circumstances, but we do have the app that's downloaded. Okay. Can you um, say a little bit more about the app then, Rianne? How do people get hold of it? So the app's um, compatible with all devices, whether you've got an iPhone or a Samsung, um, and you just go onto Google Play or the App Store, and mm -hmm. you just type in this assistance, and it should be there, and it works just the same as the card does. You can drop and drag stickers, you just splash it when you get on the bus. So okay. you've got your bus pass on your phone, which I know a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. You can just um, flash the app as well, and it lets you show what assistance you might need. So the app's always there um, and live but we have the card as well because I know for a lot of people they don't necessarily have a phone that supports apps or they don't use apps so yes okay great um one other question that we've come in um is about the accessibility features of the app is it compatible with screen readers and, and those sort of features um we had the accessibility tested so okay. it should be if there are any problems um and it's not working the way it should of course please get in contact with us because okay. we want it to be completely accessible to everyone um but we did have it accessibility tested as well as the website and everything that's on the website so 
you. That's great. Thank you. And um, there is, we've heard before some comments and again today about the actual quality of the card. Am I right in saying that it is paper and not plastic? Is there a reason for that? Um, I've not actually got one on me. Okay. I do not think it is paper. It comes okay. in a paper leaflet, which right. I think is might maybe confusing some people that you can peel off. Um, but say your card gets damaged, you you can just ask another one to be sent. Okay. Um, the way it's designed was again it was accessibility tested, so um, that was slightly before I came. Uh, so I can always ask Keith why that decision was made um, when his internet's back up, but it was accessibility tested, so I imagine it was the better people find it the better option. Out okay. Of all Great. Good. Um, one other question um, that's come in on the Q&A, Rianne, is um, about if you have a card and you get on the bus. This is a question that we get asked quite often. It's a common um, problem for disabled people. If there is a buggy in the disabled space, is that something that, again, would be covered by the kind of assistance that people would get through the card? Um, a buggy should not be in a disabled space would be my counteract to that. Um, I know a lot of buses, I've noticed the ones in Edinburgh, um, have some have a designated buggy area and some have a designated wheelchair area. They are separate now on Lothian buses, um, but a buggy shouldn't be in a wheelchair space because you have the right to be on that bus. Um, yeah, I think we hear this quite often. I think it's a kind of ongoing <laughs> issue. An ongoing um, issue, you should be able to show the card and the driver should then take into account yeah. the situation. Um, Good. So. All right. Um, a couple more questions, Rianne, about the, um, the kind of accessibility testing that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Can you say a little bit more about what you did in terms of testing it for accessibility and the stakeholders that you worked with and the kind of who... Um, we had we had loads of steering groups um, and Keith and um, the team, again, this was slightly before I came, um, worked with um, different disability, uh, dis, well, disability people organisations, um, so DPOs, so like yourself, um, you were a big front runner in it and helping it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we just, we talked to lots of different people, lots of different steering groups, um, bus operators, providers. We um, took part in the Accessible Travel Framework, um, which is a big um, group designed yeah. to combat accessible travel in Scotland. So mm -hmm. um, I know I've sat in some of those meetings myself. Um, so, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Riyad, you mentioned in your presentation um, about the situation that we're all in at the moment, the COVID-19 and the impact that that's having on people's use of public transport. Can you say a little bit more about how it's impacted on the use of the card? The use of the card, um, as far as I'm aware, there's been a bit of a lull in transport in general. So mm -hmm. um, I know for me, I'm not getting asked as many questions, but I'm still getting a lot of travel anxiety is coming through sure. um where can i travel and all that and i think a lot of people forget that we have key and essential workers are also disabled people yeah. so disabled people are still traveling um they still need the accessibility card they still need to be able to get on and off public transport with ease um so yeah the card's still being used and still um being sent out. Okay, great. And is there any plans to sort of adapt the card to include information about social distancing or? Um... The great thing about the card already is it's blank when you get it. So okay. if you want to include information about COVID and maybe um, anxieties you have around people not social distancing, mm -hmm. like you can, it's completely customizable. Um, and the reason it is is because everyone's needs are different. So yeah, um, is that something that Sestran will produce as like an additional leaflet or any kind of background information about social distancing or or how to use um, public transport? 
if it's something people would like, then we are more than happy to um, learn and develop and maybe put it together a resource. Yeah. Plan. Okay. Interesting. Brilliant. So if there's any more questions, please keep them coming through. Um, one person's asking here, did you work with the access panels to develop the app in any way? Obviously, um, Disability Equality Scotland is the umbrella organisation for the, the, the access panels. Do you know if they were involved in producing anything? Um, I think they were. Um, possibly that is a question for Keith. Um, okay. But as far as I'm aware, I think they were. Um, when it comes to the when it comes to the accessibility testing, it was very a lot of people had a lot of input on it because mm. it's in this case it's better to get lots of people's opinions. Um, so yeah, I mean I'm sure. And the app's still in development. We are okay. maybe broaden it a bit more to help mm. people. So hey. um, well, I'm sure our access panel network would be happy to give any feedback as we go forward. Um, have you had many? kind of positive messages coming back from your rebranding or the kind of benefits of, of having the cards? Have you had any I think just, I think just from the mass amount of cards that have been ordered um, mm -hmm. is a normally a good indication that people are liking it. Um, yeah. I think typically we would have maybe sent out about 50 cards. <laughs> okay. But we've now sent out about 10,000 cards. So... Um, it's more clear and modern for people, I think, to understand. It's not as cluttered, it's not as mm -hmm. brash. Um, okay. And I think people do like the fact that it's a bit more private. Um, it's not like a lanyard you put around your neck. Yeah. It's not, um, you can always attach it to a lanyard if you want. Like, it's just up to you and your preference. Okay. Um, and I know I've got a lot of, I, if you see us on Twitter, it's normally me that's behind the Twitter. Um, so I know a lot of people have been asking questions and speaking about it and liking things, which is always nice to see. It's always nice to see people engaging, Great. excited. Great. And is there a limit to the kind of images that you can use to um, stick on to your card? Are there sort of set images that you use or can anybody... It, there are set images. It? Um, we've got little icons, mm -hmm. but again, it's up to you. If I would recommend for the icons we have, maybe you do use them because mm -hmm. that'll be what the um, travel operators and providers nice. are like, yeah, they what they know to recognise. Mm -hmm. um, but there are blank stickers that come with it for you to write down what you would like. Um, okay. So it's entirely up to you. Great. Okay. Um, one other question, Rianne, that's come through the, the Q&A is about Travel Line Scotland. Um, do you work with them and have can they help to signpost to the, the card? Uh, Traveline should signpost to the card. Um, we do work with them. We've been in talks with them. Um, we always say, you know, if you're looking for up-to-date travel information, please mm -hmm. use Traveline Scotland because they will have it. Um, so, yes, we've worked with Traveline quite a lot. Okay. That's good. And um, we've heard from Edinburgh Access Panel who confirmed that they were involved. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Somebody's also asking about the Accessible Travel Hub. We um, obviously host our own travel hub at, at Disability Equality Scotland. Have Sestran been working with, with the hub and are you planning to do any more? Um, I know that we are on your hub. Um, so if you go onto the Accessible Travel Hub, um, you should find a link to the website on it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we're always, we're always keen to engage with people and learn okay. more. So Fantastic. Um, Another question has come in about the sort of availability of the card and where you can get them. Can you say a little bit more, Rianne, about where you can get them, specifically about um, travel points or even hospital information points? Is that something that you guys work with? I'm trying to get in contact with hospitals to make them accessible in hospitals. Okay. I have spoken to Mitchell Library mm -hmm. in Glasgow, and there should be some there. We've also worked with Macmillan G Libraries. Um, okay. So their points were um you can maybe access them as well and mm -hmm. if you want a card sent out to you um you see if you go onto the website it says order a card um you just follow that form and um if you phone up as well i can okay great i think 
we also have a stash of um, thistle cards back in the office so again we can help if anybody's looking for them um may have to wait a little bit of time before we can post it out yeah too. we need to get a new print run of cards um mm -hmm. which ha we had to we were in the process of doing and then events happened later. yeah okay great um is it possible to bulk order thistle cards so that people can have them um, maybe in an office that they can hand out to people that come in? Is that something uh, yeah. that you can do? Yeah, uh, if you want to bulk order, then you can phone, you can uh, phone up. I know you guys bulk ordered quite a few off of us. Um, we've had Lanarkshire Carers, they bulk ordered mm -hmm. off of us. Um, Glasgow G Libraries bulk ordered. So, yeah, that's more than, and again, um, it's free. I know some people have put their logos on it. Um, mm -hmm. If you want your logo on it, that's not completely free. Um, but if you just want a general card and leaflet in bulk order, then yeah, it's free. You just want us to read. Great. Thanks, Jan. Um, are there any plans to run the kind of TV advert? Again, somebody's asking if they'd seen it on TV. Are you, does that carry on at the moment? You're new rebranding? Are you doing anything on on? TV. Um, the TV advert only ran in a certain region okay. uh, because we got some money for it so we ran it. Um, there are, as the video I showed you, um, which you can get link access to and you can put on any plat all the platforms you want. Um, mm -hmm. We've got a radio ad, we had a radio ad as well. Okay, so. great. Um, a couple of questions have come in there. Um, I suppose this is quite um, a comment that's come up a couple of times in the past is about how the card works with the kind of concessionary travel card and, and bus passes. Do the cards get sent out with like blue badges or any concessionary travel cards? And is there any um, plans to do that? That's something we're working on because it does make sense that if you have a blue badge, you should mm -hmm. have one. Um, okay. Vessel assistance isn't a concessionary card, doesn't get you any money off. Mm -hmm. um, it's really just there for you to express what your accessibility needs are. Okay. Um, I know okay. we're working with the national entitlement card as well. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it probably makes sense for everything to be lumped together. And young, young Scott we've been talking to as well. So. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so somebody here is from the bus users group. Hi, welcome. Thank you for coming. Um, they're doing a print run as well with their logo and will help to promote the card um, at the Your Bus Matters events across Scotland. So if anybody's aware of those. Um, there was another question, there, which I'm not sure if you... Um, yeah, about checking into a hotel. Is the card any use when you're doing that sort of thing? Is there anything that you're can any similarities or that you could think of that might be helpful in that situation for somebody? Um, again, if you're checking into a hotel in Scotland and you maybe showed them the card and explained what it was, um, they should be able to use it. It's more mm -hmm. a travel card than yeah. that, but if that's something that people would like, we can always look into that and talking to hotels, um, okay. what their thoughts are on it, if that would be helpful. Yeah, I suppose accessibility is an issue, you know, if you're using the public transport to get to a hotel, it'd be nice to be able to then yeah. give the same information once you get there. Um, but another question here about um, working with travel operators. Um, do you, I know obviously Sestran are, are focused on a particular area, but are you working with any other RTPs, those are regional transport partnerships, to do work across the kind of country? Maybe specifically rural communities are mentioned here in the northeast? Yeah, all the RTP should know what this was. Okay. Um, they are all part of it. They all help it. Um, we've spoken with SP, SPT quite extensively. Mm -hmm. um, High Trans. Okay. Um, they. High Trans. Are, are, do they cover the kind of northeast areas that were? That's kind of Aberdeen and. Yeah. That um, area. They all the RTPs know it mm -hmm. and should be promoting it. Um, okay, and do they get trained the same as? Um, yeah, we're trying everyone. to develop a pack that people can just send out to all the different mm -hmm. ones, all different transport operators. Okay. But I think the ones we've worked with the most probably would be Lothian. Okay. Great. Lovely. I 
think we're probably getting through these questions quite quickly. Um, if anybody has any final questions, we've got a couple of minutes left. If anybody wants to get a final question in, give Rianne a break. <laughs> She's been doing really well. But I think overall, it's really important that we can share this information because obviously there's, there's a lot of information there that people can, can take in and benefit from. And as you've said, you've, you're seeing and hearing the benefits of using the card from a lot of people, which is great. Um, and I suppose for us at Disability Equality Scotland, the important thing is just sharing that message and making sure that everybody knows that it's available and that the, the staff understand what it means when, when they see one so that everybody's getting that improved public transport experience. Yeah, I mean, um, definitely, because everyone should be able to use public transport. Um, everyone should have access to travel, no matter mm. what. So. Yes. Um, somebody's asking, though, if people aren't getting the assistance that they need, is there any way they can be supported to raise that issue with the transport provider? And I suppose if somebody does have a negative experience using their card, is there a way to report that back? Um, yeah, you. I think you can report it to us. There's mm -hmm. a comment box. Um, okay. I, I know personally I have dealt with complaints from right. people. Um, there was one recently who, um, it was a, a woman who was about 84 and um, she was really struggling to get on the bus. So I, um, she contacted us, um, phoned us up and I got in contact with Lothian Buses directly. Okay. and managed to link them both together to help resolve the issue so that wasn't completely speaking for her so that mm -hmm. Lothian buses because um, when we've had experience with them they've been really good and generally when there's been an issue it's they've been quite good at addressing it so okay. um, if there are any issues then I have I do have contacts that I can okay great and again bus users Scotland are saying that they can take the matter up if anybody wants to get in touch with them as well so thanks for that Brilliant. Thank you everybody for your questions today and your time this morning. Um, thanks to, first of all to Rianne, that's great. Thank you for the presentation and for stepping in. I think we lost Keith quite early on there. Um, as I said, we will um, share the recording of this webinar on our own social media and after today's event you will receive a little evaluation survey so please um, take the time to give us some feedback and we can work on improving these for our future webinars. Thank you, everybody. That's been really helpful. And thanks, Rianne. And um, take care. We'll see you all again on a webinar soon. Thanks, Nay.